Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my talk, What's Really to Blame? My name is Jan. I'm working as a solution consultant for Zen Technologies. And hopefully everybody of you have read the abstract of this talk really carefully, because this topic is about PHP. So, mm, yay. <laughs> okay, nobody left so far, that's good, perfect. Okay, um, yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit of background about my company, about, by, about Zend. Um, for those of you who don't know what Zend is or who Zend is, actually, uh, Zend was founded by the authors of PHP 3. So Zev Sugaski and Andy Goodman, two students from Israel, decided to rewrite the PHP engine. Uh, it was initially created by Rasmus Lerdorf, and these two guys rewrote the engine of PHP, the core of PHP. That's why everybody who is using PHP at the moment, not everybody, but most of the people who are using PHP at the moment are using also the Zend engine. Um, these two guys, Zev and Andy, that's the reason why it's called Zend, um, um, they decided to, to make a commercial product or a commercial company uh, uh, around the PHP ecosystem, and that's where we are at the moment. The, the company is um, based out of Cupertino, in the direct um, neighborhood to, to Apple and to Google. It's very nice over there. Um, but main development is still in, in Israel. So that's all about Zend. And... Um, yeah, now I want to talk about the following. Actually, about DevOps. I know, I know, buzzword, yeah? And I promise it will be the last slide where I'm talking about DevOps, but actually it is about DevOps. And I can tell you from my experience that, um, yeah, we ha I have seen a lot, of, a lot of structures within companies. So sometimes the dev is the ops, sometimes the devs, do not like the ops and vice versa. Sometimes the ops does not know anything about the dev, dev team, so that they have to open a ticket in order to communicate to each other. And all of these um, different situations, of course, makes it a little bit, um, yeah, let's say, challenging to, to get a um, streamlined process from the development to production. So as I said earlier, this talk is about PHP. We are talking here about how to get an application which is developed in PHP from the development system onto a live cluster. And this will be also the demo I will show you in a couple of minutes. And this is where I'm very excited about because it's a live demo and I'm always <laughs> excited about live demos. Um, but anyway, if we are talking about DevOps, we are also talking about the next buzzword, continuous delivery. Uh, continuous delivery is, of course, not, not a, not a one-click product. You know, we, we get calls from customers and say, hey, can you install for us continuous delivery? This is not so easy because continuous delivery is, of course, a methodology, maybe a mindset, and it contains of several pieces of software, of workflows, and of course I have to concentrate in my demo today uh, on, on several pieces. So, for example, I will not cover today the provisioning. Provisioning of servers is also something which is very important in the continuous delivery process, because if you have a high traffic on your website, you want maybe to provision new servers on the fly, completely automatic. I will not cover this topic. I will also not cover the integration into monitoring, like Nagios or HP OpenView or Tivoli or whatever there for tools is. No, I will, I will concentrate, of course, continuous integration, because we are here on a Jenkins conference, but I will also um, concentrate on deployment. And uh, I heard it this morning, um, deployment, PHP, files, copy, it's not a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, FTP works. Uh, no, <laughs> maybe it works for, for uh, some small sites which are not business critical, but actually there are, believe it or not, there are huge websites out there which are running on PHP. Um, and of course, not everybody is able to do a deployment with FTP. And there are a lot of solutions or workflows around the deployment for PHP applications, 
maybe you have um, you create packages and unzip it or untar it on the target server, or you do a SVN checkout or a git git clone, and then you do an rsync to server. So there are a lot of um, ways how to do a deployment, but actually, actually, we think we from Zen think that there is still a lack of standardization, and this is um, something what I would like to show you today, how you can deploy also onto a to a cluster of server on a standardized way, and this becomes um, actually very important because we we get more and more customers who have. Um, who wants to do, want to do something like this? Yeah? Five to seven releases a day. We are not talking about a release per month or a release per quarter. No, we are talking about five to seven releases a day. And of course, this is something which you normally cannot achieve if you do just an FTP update. This is not possible. And um, so what, what, what have, do we have to do? is automation. We have to automate everything from the development to, to the production deployment. And this is um, close the circle to the to the continuous delivery. Of course, um, you do probably do not want to deploy a new version after every commit of your source code to life, but you have to be ready to deploy. And this is the idea, or at least it's my idea, my understanding of continuous delivery, that you are able to deploy onto a live system uh, at every point in time at the day. This is the idea. As I've mentioned earlier, um, I will not, I, I cannot show you the holy grail of continuous delivery today, you know, because there are dependencies on on the development team, on the application, on the size of the application. There are a lot of dependencies, and uh, it depends on how you want to imp uh, implement the uh, continuous deployment or continuous delivery process, uh, but I would like to show you one way, a very easy way, how you can accomplish this. And for this, I want to first uh, make you familiar with my architecture. Um, so as I said, it's, it's actually a very easy setup. I have um, one server, which is, for my, uh, which is my test environment, and then I also have a cluster of servers, um, which is my production environment. And then, of course, I have, for my example, for my demo here, a Jenkins installed, and I also using Git as my version control system. Uh, actually, um, I will not use GitHub. Be first, I decided I wanted to do it everything in the cloud and fancy, wow, wow. But um, actually, I decided because I know the network connections on conferences to do everything local. Um, so that we do not have any, any issues here. So this is my initial setup, very easy. I also have to talk about the tools which I'm using. And of course, I'm using Jenkins, obvious. But I'm also using Zen Server. Um, Zen Server, just for explanation, Zen Server is, is a tool which, is, which comes in a commercial manner, but there's also a free version available. I will, show, I will um, do it with a commercial version today, but actually it, it does not really matter. Um, the Zen server um, is a PHP application stack. So if you're running a PHP application, you're probably running on Debian or Red Hat, and you have installed apt-get install PHP in order to have the PHP core. Instead, you could also install Zen server. The idea of Zen server is that you do not only get the PHP um, sources from the Zend repository, but you also get support for this. So this is something um, which is very important. You get a supported and licensed PHP stack. And the idea is, of course, also that you can run on every operating system the same PHP application. So we are supporting Windows and uh, SUSE, uh, Debian, Red Hat, all of the derivatives, and also IBM I, if somebody knows what this is. Um, if we are talking about Zen Server, which is actually the PHP core, the runtime, um, I also want to mention the Web API. The Web API is a functionality of Zen Server in order to control the complete PHP stack via RESTful service. So actually, Zen Server brings with it, with it um, a UI where you can configure the PHP, where you can um, 
restarts the server where you can also deploy an application, but you do not have to use the UI. And this is, of course, something very important to understand. If I want to automate things, I have to use APIs. And this is done via the RESTful service, which is offered by Zen Server. We will see it in, in a couple of minutes, what this does mean. As I mentioned, I'm using, I plan to use GitHub, but I'm only using Git at the moment. Um, I will also use some PHP QA tools. Um, actually, I'm using PHP unit and pdepend, so for unit testing and for dependency um, measurement. There are a lot of other QA tools which you could implement into the process, but I do not want to have a pipeline which takes 10 minutes or so for one run. That's why I've decided only to use these two tools. And yeah, as a special guest, um, Docker. Out of interest, uh, who have heard about Docker? Okay, cool. Uh, so for those of you who haven't heard about Docker, Docker is um, <laughs> it's not so easy to explain. It's, it's, let's say, the evolution of uh, virtualization. The idea is that um, you are able with Docker um, to have very lightweight containers, um, server containers in our context, which are also um, which you can version. So uh, I've also read it's um, like like Git for 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 servers, because you are able to ramp up a server very lightweight. It's up in two or three seconds because it uses the kernel. So it, it's only Linux and it uses the kernel from the host system, and then you can do some some. Um, some, some commands, and if you're happy with the result, then you can version the container. And the interesting thing is that you do not store four gigabyte-sized images, but you only store the, the delta between the original container and, uh, and the new container. And this is what we are using, uh, what I'm using here for my unit test and also for PHP depend, for pdepend. And maybe we, we will see um, that this is something very cool for the future. Before I come to the demo, um, I just want to mention also this. Because if, if I read about continuous delivery, continuous deployment, um, there's a mostly the demos are nice and shiny and everything works. But maybe this is not the, the pure reality. Sometimes things break. And they can break at different stages. For example, a deployment itself can break. The functionality can break. And breaking does not only mean that you get a white page or a fatal error or something like this. Of course, you can also maybe program uh, uh, an infinite loop or something like this, um, which, which, or, or something which, which, um, which makes the application responding very, very uh, slow. And this is um, all, of, all about these issues which can occur um, I want to cover a few of them uh, in, in, in the demo because, yeah, as I said, several things can go wrong. And this is actually about what's really to blame. Uh, because who is responsible for what? Who is responsible for, um, for deployment? Who is responsible for, for the wrong code or something like this? And so what's very important is that we have a root cause analysis, that we understand what is the root cause of the problem in order to fix it. And this root cause analysis has to be actually very fast. And finally, there's also something important. And um, actually, this cannot be done so easily with FTP deployment, a rollback. So if something goes wrong, you must have the chance to roll back within 30 seconds, also on a cluster. And now we come to the demo. All right. OK. So as I've mentioned, um, yes, as a basis, I'm using Jenkins. And what I will show you today is how to install PIMCore. Uh, PIMCore is, is a nice open source content management system. So uh, I decided not to go for a simple Hello World application. So really challenging, install a full application with, uh, I don't know, 500,000 lines of code. So it's, it's uh, quite a decent size. And what I have created before is several jobs. And you see here, these, these jobs are completely independent from each other because I want to arrange them in a pipeline. Um, we see that I have a checkout. Checkout is only doing, yeah, checking out from Git, not, not um, 
very challenging. Um, then I have also jobs for unit testing, for pdpend, and for package app. And this is actually the packaging of the app is also an important step because if you want to use the deployment of Send Server, which is the basis for the test and for the production system, we are packaging the app. Package means it's actually nothing else than a zip package with some meta information in it. But this package is valid also on all platforms. So it's not bind to, to Ubuntu or to Windows. If you have a package built for Windows, you can also use this package for Ubuntu. Um, after we have packaged the app, I want to deploy to test, and then I want to archive the ZPK. Actually, this is the package. The package is called ZPK, but it's nothing else than a zip file. And um, yeah, let's see how this is working. Finally, we're also deploying to production. If I go to, to checkout and I start the build, I will go now to this pipeline. And unfortunately, I only have a very low display resolution here. But um, maybe I can explain. So I'm first checking out um, um, the source code from, from Git. Actually, uh, this is uh, the plugin which, is, which I'm using here is uh, the delivery pipeline plugin, um, which makes these nice dependencies of all of the um, jobs. And you see here that I'm also starting in parallel several tasks. So for example, the, the package app, the unit test, and the pdpend. And the interesting thing here for, for unit test and for pdpend is that we are using Docker in order to start it. But um, you see, I, I will come to this later, but I want also to open another window because this is now my Zen server endpoint. This is my Zen server user interface. And everything, if everything is going OK, packaging, PHP unit, and pdpend, I'm starting the deployment process. Now the deployment process will start, and hopefully everything is working. So now the package will be deployed on this dev server. You see, this is triggering that. And so we see that we're here now um, staging and activating the, the PIM core application on this system. Um, okay, I have also to prove that it's now working. This is also exciting for me. <coughs> and today we have a ready to run uh, application, which is which is PIM core. Um, so now, behind the scenes, what happened here? Let's go back. So first of all, I, I would like to show you maybe the unit test, the configuration of the unit test. Uh, I always forget this, L click here. And actually it's it's nothing really weird here. So first of all, I have to clone the workspace in order to get all the source code. So I clone it from the checkout process. And this is what I have to do uh, in order to do the unit test. And you see here that this is a Docker command. So first of all, I'm cleaning up several things. But the second line, you see Docker run. Uh, and what I'm doing here, let me, ah. Ah, no, I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so first of all, this is a very cool thing. I'm starting up a MySQL image because I'm, I need MySQL for my unit test. So this is um, docker run minus d means that I want to run it as a daemon so that it um, keeps up running. Otherwise, docker has, um, at the beginning, a very strange concept because at the end, you are... Uh, or you can define a command what you're executing. And the um, Docker, if you do not specify with the minus D option, will also shut down immediately after the command has been done. This is an interesting concept of, of Docker. And that's why I'm running it as a demonized version. Um, of course, I have prepared it. But one thing which is very important to understand, on my Jenkins machine, I have not installed MySQL and I have not installed PHP. 
because I do not want to have some dependencies on the Jenkins server. I have everything in the Docker, and the Docker is, or the image, the container, is, um, is a clone of the live system. This is the ideal solution. So I start up here the MySQL, and here, actually, I'm doing some, some ant stuff, but this is not necessary anymore. And in the next step, I'm running, without the minus D option here, I'm running now the PHP unit test. I, I'm running the PHP unit slash send server container. This is the second line. I link this to my MySQL instance so that the new container knows of the MySQL. This is also very cool about Docker. You do not have to think about IP addresses or ports. You can just expose everything which is needed um, by, by linking containers to each other. And, and finally, you see after the PHP unit slash send server, there's a command which I'm executing. PHP unit dash C slash workspace PHP unit dot XML dot this. So this is what I'm using in order to run the unit test. And after the unit tests have been executed, the container disappears. This is all I have to do. So instead of just running uh, PHP unit dash C, I just have to put in the Docker configuration commands in advance, and then everything is run in a completely encapsulated container, which is very, very nice, because this is also something where you can very easily um, um, separate tasks. Um, you can, can run it more parallelized if you do it like this. You can also use agents for, for doing something like this, um, because you only have to prepare once this container image, which has then server and PHP unit installed on it. Then server is here necessary because I want to have exactly the same PHP version running for the unit test as it's running later on in the production environment. And this is the cool stuff about, about Docker, actually. And I'm doing exactly the same thing also for, for the pdpend. And uh, then I, uh, or in my example, I also was able um, to run it successfully. So this is about the, the Docker configuration. So this is something which is, which is really nice. I also have to show you now, I will not show you the unit test, uh, the pdpend, sorry, but I will show you the, the package. And again, it's Docker. So I have also a Docker image on which I have a web API client installed. You remember that I said then send server exposes all of the functionality through a RESTful service. Of course, I need a client which is using this web API. And this is what I'm, what I'm running here. I have an image which is pre-installed with a web API client, which is actually called ZS Client. It's an open source tool provided by our global service department. And what I'm telling now here is just which folder I want to package, to which destination it should copy, what's the name of the package, and I can also specify a version which is an environment variable of, of uh, Jenkins, which is a pipeline version. And, final, and this is all I have to do for the packaging. And last but not least, also the deploy to test. Again, a Docker image? No, you're not. Why not? Interesting. I should, I could use also Docker for this. Uh, actually, um, here I'm using just a, a bash command, and here you see that the the later uh, the second part of the um, um, command is the most interesting. That I'm using the ZS client install app as a command. I'm specifying a target, which is my dev system. Uh, and I'm specifying ZPK name, PIMCore ZPK, and then I'm running this. Actually, this is the same uh, web API client as is used for, for the packaging itself. So this client is also responsible for deploying the app. And this is all I have to do. So checking out, packaging the app, and finally deploying it onto the server. Of course, I also want to show you what happens in the case of an, of an error. So... I will, okay, this is now a little bit fake, of course, um, but uh, maybe I should show it to you. 
Uh, so this is a script which is executed during the deployment process. So in the deployment process, you can also define some hook scripts which are responsible for several individual tasks like um, yeah, creating a database, creating directories, writing configuration files, so everything which is a little bit individual. Uh, this can be done via, via tasks. Uh, so here you see, for example, that I'm, I'm uh, running a symlink, for example. But now I'm breaking the deployment process. I'm just throwing an exception, so the deployment process should stop at this stage. Okay, now I have to... Uh, put it into git. git uh, break the deployment. Okay. And if I go now back to the Jenkins and start build now and everything, yeah. We will see in the pipeline after a while. So of course, um, I have to apologize about the speed, but currently I'm running, I don't know, six or seven virtual machines in parallel on, on the server, on my laptop, not on the server. So sometimes it takes some time. But the, of course, what I want to see here is what happens now to the deployment. What happens to the deployment? Um, the deployment will fail. It will show us here in the pipeline. And then it should start um, the rollback process. So here you see there is a condition. So either if, if we have a build success, the ZPK will be archived or it will be rolled back. This is also a condition plugin, I think what I'm using here. And um, we should see it here in the server in a second. Okay, the deployment has been started. Now we should see now. Oh, it's my deployment number 100. Okay, you see now there was an error with this application. You will see that, okay, p um, Jenkins will also get this information. And now the rollback process is started. And actually now the application is rolled back. And actually I'm not doing anything else that I have show to you uh, in the application deployment. Insto instead of install app command, I'm calling the rollback command. And the idea, of course, is that now, you see, I have the old version installed on my, on my system, on my test system. So if you have a test team, they can continuously work on the test system. With uh, this setup, it's um, nearly not possible to break the test setup at least from the deployment perspective. So if the deployment fails, we are automatically rolling back. And this is also part of the continuous delivery, that we s always have a way to continuously deliver versions, ready-to-use versions, to either test, t test teams or to your customers. Okay, so this is um, one interesting thing that you can roll back. Um, I do not want to go the whole step back now. I want also to show you that this can be, of course, deployed to production. So uh, as you see here, um, this is still a gray bar here. That means that it has not deployed automatically to production. So this is only for the really brave people <laughs> who always want to deploy after each commit, because, of course, you can also trigger Jenkins uh, for each commit. Um, but no, I have defined it so that I want to um, run this command manually. And this is what I'm doing here. So I'm just clicking build now. It should take the, the package and hopefully this will work. Okay, and this is now my production system. I will log in. Applications. And here you see the application deployment has been started. Um, there's a reason why I'm showing this to you because the fancy thing about it is that I'm have now deployed to three nodes in parallel. Yes, 
The idea is that you only call once the installation. I have the same package, this is important, I'm deploying exactly the same package as I've used for the testing system. And this package, um, I, I'm just installing it on one of the servers into the Zen server cluster. And Zen server takes care itself for distributing the package. So it's not up to you to do an rsync or to, to share some code via a uh, shared file system or so. No, you upload the package once to, to a Zen server instance, which is in the cluster, which is ready in the cluster. And then Zen server takes care for distributing this package. And of course, a rollback also works on this system. Yes. And the only thing you have to install for getting such a deployment solution is instead of installing PHP, install the Zen server stack. No other tools are, are mandatory for, for this. Of course, I have also mentioned um, other, other things which should be now triggered after a deployment because we have seen how to um, roll back an application if we know that the deployment has failed. But of course, there are other um, things which could be interesting. So for example, I go back to the, to the test system. And what you maybe not see <laughs> at the very bottom here is that Zen server gives you more, more feedback on the application. You see here that there is a dev bar. Maybe I, I can make it a little bit <laughs> larger. The dev bar is actually mainly used for, for development purposes, um, but it can also be used with, with, a token, with a tokenized authentication. It can also be used in production. This is a very nice thing. So you can say, um, I, as a developer, want to see what's happening on my, on my system, uh, also on live, because live is, for developers, it's often a black box, and they do not have any insights about what is going on live. And such a toolbar like, like the dev bar will give you some more insights. Um, because you see here what's really happening on the system. So for example, you can have the runtime. You see that PHP took uh, 1.2 seconds, the database 209 milliseconds, I.O., network, and so on. Um, what you also can see is which functions are used. Um, to make it a little bit larger, uh, so that you can see, hey, what's what's going on for the Zen stuff or for for all of the the custom functionality. You see um, which command has been called, um, how how long it took to run it, uh, and which file it is. Um, here you see also the, the all of the database um, uh, um, statements which have been executed. Unfortunately. Uh, this should <laughs> look a little bit nicer on a, on a larger screen. And um, so you get a lot of inside information of the application itself, which gives you the information in order to fix some issues. And especially there's uh, here a lot of entries in the log file, actually. But this is also, um, here you see also a warning from Zen Server itself. In Zen Server, you can, can define monitoring rules when Zen Server should trigger a certain event. And here you see, for example, that I have consumed nearly 10 megabytes, which is not so much, but um, we get a high memory usage information from Zen server. And the cool thing about it is if you're logged in, hopefully I logged in, I can also um, quickly jump to the Zen server overview from the toolbar and here you get some more information. So what are the server variables? What are the request variables? Uh, and so on. And finally, you also, if you want, you can have a code trace where you get the information, what has really happened to the, to the user with all of the information, so what has been called with all the time and, and, uh, um, and, and all the interesting information. So, of course, this is something which um, should be taken into the con consideration this, that Zen Server is also a tool for the developers because with such a kind of information, the ops team is normally, they, they are not interested in this information because they do not know how the application has been developed. But of course, the development team is interested even if it's running in production. 
And so we get this information here. This is um, available for, for developers. They cannot break everything in production. So we have also a developer access to Zen server so that they cannot, uh, for example, restart the cluster from here, uh, which is very important. And but for the ops team, of course, something like the dashboard could also be interesting because here you get, um, of course, it's just a test system, but you get an information about what is really going on on the system. How many requests per second do we have? What's the average response time? How many events um, do we have? And the interesting thing is, of course, that this information, that these graphs, are just a subset of the information which is collected by Zen server. And of course, this collection or this data can also be grabbed out by Nagios, for example, in order to display the status of your cluster farm from a PHP application perspective. Um, this can be really easily accomplished, especially as we are providing a, a Nagios plugin uh, for your convenience, which you can immediately uh, use and connect and server with it. All right. Um, let me quickly jump back to this browser. And I would like to give you some, some more links. Actually, of course, our website zen.com. Uh, take a look. We have relaunched it last, last week or so. Uh, actually, it's based on PIMCore. That's why I've used PIMCore as an example today. Um, we have also some, some services around continuous delivery. So if, if you like the idea of how we are doing it, uh, please check it out um, and, and contact us. Uh, so my email address, I'm not sure whether I have I have it on the last slide probably. If not, it's jan at zen.com. It's not so hard. I'm the first and only Jan in the company. And uh, finally, I also want to give you um, the information. Uh, check the GitHub page from, from Zen Patterns out because here we are collecting a lot of stu stuff which is around continuous delivery. So you find, for example, the web API client which I'm using. But you will also find the Nagios plugin. You will find... Um, you will find, what else will you find? Uh, the chef integration, puppet integration. This is also for provisioning that you can ramp up a cluster within seconds with, with a, a provisioning tool like, like chef or puppet. We also have a bamboo integration, not only Jenkins. And um, there, there is uh, some, some more stuff which you can find on the GitHub page. Um, yeah, just check it out. That's it. Dankeschön. <laughs>